Thompson Adamson, a local historian. He is returning to his birthplace, the Adamson Farm. His dairy farm occupied the present site of Arendelle Secondary School. He farmed diligently with his wife and author, Jean Adamson, and his children, Bob and Joan. The family was involved in the Anglican Church on Mississauga Road, St. Peter's. Tommy's forefathers founded the church and were instrumental in the development of the town of Arendelle. Today, Tommy will relate many of his experiences and memories of Arendelle. Could you explain what we are looking at, please? This is an early plan of the village of Irondale. Really, it's called the town of Toronto at one time. But, uh, that Irondale's had several different names, but Toronto was the first name, which it couldn't have after 1834 because Toronto took that name. And, uh, we couldn't have it anyway. This is a later picture, 1885. Uh, we're looking west, a hotel on the right, and a hotel on the left. The lady in white is Mrs. Charlotte Schreiber, the noted artist. This is a picture of the Credit River below the Dundas Highway. You can see the bridge there. It's not very clear. That is a low, fairly low level bridge. We used to always have standing armies, and uh, they used to like to come to Irondale to maneuver around the hills and the valleys and the pond or the lake at one time was there. And this is a picture looking west again. This is a later picture than, than the first one. This is a picture about 1910, I believe, you know. It shows um, the mill at the, the first picture on the right and uh, the hotel on the next picture and uh, sheds for the horses and also troops marching down through the village. Another early bridge, a picture of the bridge. This is an earlier one than that other one. There's still two people standing on it. Um, I don't know just what that building is there. It could have been a, uh, at one time, the man that kept the toll gate on the bridge uh, used to keep a horse in th there and have his living quarters there as well. Now we're out on the Dundas Highway, not far from where we are now. Uh, and this is an entrance to the uh, a farm, um, and there's a gateway, gates there, gate post, concrete post. Uh, the Dundas Highway runs right along the front of this picture. This would be about opposite Dunman Drive, where Dunman Drive leaves the Dundas Highway. And this was the, the driveway into the home of General Peter Adamson. The house in the background is Peter Adamson's home. Uh, he had this built, he came over from wherever, from England or Scotland, uh, maybe to just to buy the property or to buy a property. And he left a man here to build this house. You'll see it better in a minute. But this is the laneway down, and this is right in the middle of present-day homelands. There's, the, there's a better picture of the house. A remarkable house to be built in the 1820s. That was a, a solid stone brick house, a stone house. And... Uh, there weren't many stone houses built uh, at that time. But it just happened there was lots of stones, and Loyalist Creek runs right through the property, and no, no doubt they dug a lot of stones right out of the creek. There's Peter Adamson. You can call him General Peter Adamson. He was a brevet major general, which allowed him, I guess, to be called general. Um, pretty stern-looking old codger. I always tell this to the public school kids, and they get quite a kick out of it. This is Dr. Adamson's house. This is a, I am a descendant of this Dr. Joseph Adamson. And this house is on what is now the Queen Elizabeth Highway, was the upper middle road, and it's um, fairly close to Sheridan. Now, the old doctor never li lived in Irondale, but he lived in Sheridan. This is Ed Bonham's garage. This is a highway garage, which was quite the thing back in those days. Well, especially here, because uh, the, the highway was built about 1923, 24. And this is pictures taken about 1926. And uh, that was quite a thing out in the country to have a, a garage. Now, that did have gas pumps, as well as it had room to repair cars. and. Uh, Believe me, the old cars need a lot of repairing. 
and, and that's an old Hudson car made into a wrecker that you could tow the cars and trucks with that got broke down or got in the ditch or anything else. You see them today, but they're all um, beautiful looking jobs today with all, everything's automatic. This, to, to raise that truck, you'd have to crank your thing up like this and lock it up there. But it was typical, it's just one of the advancements made in, in those years. That's our farm, my dad's farm, mother's farm. Dad bought it, this farm in 1904, and he and mother were married the 1st of March, 1905. But they didn't come into these buildings because the, the, these buildings weren't there. Dad and mother built this house about 19... 14, the war, 15, the war was on, but uh, they kept on building it, and uh, it, it was a tremendous house, uh, 18 rooms without the full basement, um, hardwood floors, all that kind of stuff, but, uh, and a furnace, a water, hot water furnace in it, and it was wired at that time for electricity, and we didn't have any electricity at that time, we got it a few years later. But the barn Dad had built in 1908, I believe, there used to be a, a little sign on it. And it was a big barn, it was 84 feet long by 46 feet in diameter. It housed a lot of uh, livestock. That's the lane running right back through, up to the back end of the farm practically. And ear mills today would be going right through the barn. And then of course it swings to the left out here and rejoins the fifth line, or joins the fifth line. Mm -hmm. But at one time, um, the Air Mills Parkway started here at the highway. It didn't come from below, it just started here, went up through. So there's been so many changes. That little square house way in the background was the original house. And my dad built all the other buildings on that. I, I had the farm until 1955 when I sold it, but my dad had died in 19... 48. That's Irondale Secondary School. I don't know the year it was built for sure, but it was quite a long time after I had sold the farm before it was built, and it was about the first building on this site. We're looking at the front of the Sproul House now. It's just down this Dundas Highway, a little bit from our gateway. That's the Hammond home. The Hammond road, if any of you know where it is, is about opposite the Sproul House, uh, but it, it used to come right up to the Dundas Highway, but in late years they cut it off for a couple of blocks south of that and made you come around now by the little mall there. And uh, this old house, a terrific old house, built about 1870, 75 I believe, terrific house. Uh, now it's even better than it was then. I don't know who owns it now, but the whole front of it is landscaped, and it looks terrible. It looks really nice. This is um, my uncle's home, Harry Adamson's home, but John Beverly Robinson built this home about 1833, and John Beverly Robinson was an official of the government, became the uh, top man in the government for quite a number of years. But he built this home on the farm that was next to our farm. And this house is still there, except it looks better today. It is the Boy Scouts home now. It's just down the road here a little way. There's the first St. Peter's Church. Now, this is a painting by Mrs. Schreiber. And um, Mrs. Schreiber painted many of these paintings and sold them to raise money for the, to build a new church. This, they built a new church in 1880. Seven, yeah. They tore this one down 1885. But this was the first church, and it wasn't made of logs, as most people think. It was made of saw and lumber, and, and was built in 1826 and 27. The church was founded in 1825 at the home of General Peter Adamson. There's some of the seating arrangements in the, the church. There used to be box pews in the church, and uh, you rented a pew, but uh, uh, anyway, this was part of the, this was the way the, 
they raised enough money to pay the minister, I believe. And sometimes the poor guy didn't get very well paid. This is the second church made of stone, and the stone came up from the, from the river and made, you know, it built of stone by James Robinson, who lived right close there. Many people came with a horse or buggy or team, and uh, in the cold weather, it was nice to drive them into the shed and keep them warm, put a blanket over them. That's the little old school. It was in, you know, where the art center is today. I went to that little old school, um, and at this time, when I went there, it was made into two rooms, but at one time, it was just a one-room school, and one teacher taught the whole school. And this was the estate of W.W. W. Evans. Uh, this was the lodge of the caretaker's home. This is the old Schreiber home, one of the Schreiber homes, there were three of them. But this is the one that the college owns now, and it's just north of the college, one of the college buildings. Um, typical old stone, stone building, and I guess the stone probably came out of the Credit River. Or the, the Mullet Creek that runs down through the back part of this farm. There's the O'Neill House, and you, some of you know it, it's still on the Mississauga Road. It's below the big O'Neill place where they built all those mansions up there, just below um, Burnham you know, This old house is still standing there, a beautiful old house. It, it was owned by the Crozier family for many, many years, but it's made like uh, an early hotel. You can see all the windows. This is my grandfather and grandmother's family. And my dad is the guy in the center in the back, I believe, with his hat in his hand. There was seven boys and four girls in this family. And grandpa and grandma are there. <coughs> uh, so there were 13 that sat down to a meal. That was quite a, an undertaking. But uh, George Adamson was my, the last owner of it. This is the same family in the same house, only this is a side picture. And they're getting ready for a garden party that night. And the garden party was a big event years ago because we didn't have radio, we didn't have television, we didn't have any entertainment. But uh, that is a typical part of the old village. There, they're building the dam, power works. Um, this was a tremendous undertaking. They had to dig down into the riverbed about 18 feet to get proper footing. and. Uh, the first outfit that, that the outfit that started when broke, I don't know in what year, but it sat idle for quite a few years. Then somebody else took it over and they got it going. There, the dam is partially built, but it, it's just that had the flood that broke apart out of the top that took about 16 feet right out of it. And, and so they're trying to, to rebuild it, but they didn't make it hold. Power works only didn't work 100% efficient ever, except for a very few years. This is at the entrance of the tunnel. If somebody, if you go down into the park today and drive up the roadway as far as you can and turn into the parking lot, the farthest parking lot, that you'll still see the remnants of the tunnel. Uh, it did operate satisfactorily for a few years. Well, then when the dam broke. It, it didn't it didn't have as much power, but the power was transmitted, a lot of it, to West Toronto, and uh, they fed it back through their grid to New Toronto and Long Branch and those places. As well, we had power in Irondale and uh, Cooksville and those little villages all the way down into the city. There's the interior of the, of the powerhouse. That's Teddy Little. They closed this whole works down about 1923, I think, thinking they could always get all the power they ever needed from Niagara. How little they knew. I mean, uh, at that time they could have, but uh, they didn't realize how much the growth was going to be in this, in southern Ontario. There's Lake Irondale. I don't know who the kid is there, but uh, that gives you some idea of the size of the lake. It was really big and fairly deep, but it was a great place for swimming and uh, 
never was much boating, but um, swimming and uh, ice cutting, or skating, a lot of skating. We used to have hockey teams, but not too successively. Um, a lot of the farmers cut ice and stored it for their milk, shipping milk. Some of the storekeepers had refrigerators. There was no electric refrigeration at this time, so ice was the next best thing. This is a, the east end of Irondale, O'Brien's store on the left, and a blacksmith shop just next to it. And this is about 1922 or 23. The road isn't paved yet, so it's before before 1923 to 24. This is Dr. Dixie's old house. It's on where I showed you the first bend there. Well, uh, that uh, house is gone now, but it was there for a long time. And I guess it wasn't built by Dr. Dixie, but uh, he was there in about 1843, I believe. And he was a local practitioner. Um, Dixie Village, just down past Cooksville, was named after him. I guess he had a lot of friends down there. This had some notoriety a few years ago when a man had his wife killed in this house. Uh, Demeter, maybe some of you remember. Well, she was killed in this house. There's Dr. Dixie. This is the old avenue up into the McGraw estate. And of course, in the Price Estate after that, the Price um, had a, a, a big dairy farm, and then they converted that to orchards. And Arthur Price was the last remaining one, and he have finally sold it all off. And, uh, and that's where the woodlands are today. But this way is just east of the, the roadway that runs in. The, there are some hunters up, that's up around where the Price House or the McGraw House was. Maybe that's the first McGraw House, I don't know. But McGraws came about 1828, and uh, they said the, the family, the boys, built a log house. And this could be it, I'm not, no, I don't know. But during the Depression, lots of people went hunting for rabbits and that, because they were, a lot of people didn't have any jobs, they had no money, and if they could go and, and shoot a few rabbits that would keep them eating for a week or two. That's the McGraw house, uh, Irondale. That's what they call Irondale. And uh, that's, of course, where we got our name for the village from eventually. But uh, this house was struck by lightning in 1923 and it burned to the ground. Uh, when the Price family owned the, uh, the farm, they were in the milk business. And they shipped her, her uh, the milk went into Toronto often at night by with horses, big heavy horses hooked up to big wagons, maybe four or six horses hooked to a heavy wagon, and they'd haul it in. They bottled it out here and hauled it into Parkdale, and somebody in there did delivered it the next morning, but they hauled it in overnight. Stephen Price and Sons. There's the Price home is on the part of the golf course, just down below, opposite their farm, uh, on the other side of the highway. It wasn't their, always their house, but uh, uh, Arthur Price bought it. It used to be the golf course home, and, and before that it belonged to W.D. Ross, who was the lieutenant governor of Ontario at one time. It was his country home. And later, well, he had a, a small golf course on the property, and uh, he sold it to Art Price, who increased the golf course, and then eventually it was increased, I guess, to the full size, 18 full course. And that's a, a, a house that was along there too. That's built by my uncle Arthur Adamson. And Arthur Price lived in this one for a while. This is the, the old Methodist church, but now it's Presbyterian church. The Presbyterians formed their church in the community hall. And, and when this church became vacant, they bought it. The, the, the Methodist and United Methodist became the United Church. There's um, what we used to call the Burke House on Jarvis Street, and uh, it's 
I think it's gone maybe now too. It belongs to the little girl, the boys and girls school there. The picture of Irondale, in front of the horse wagon in front of Barker store. It's not J.M. Barker on the side of it, I believe. Shows the hotel which was burned in 1919. Shows the mill behind, behind that. In the background, you see the church. And uh, here's a, most of that is gone now because of this big fire in uh, 1919. Took out Barker's store and the hotel and the community hall across the street, which at that time was the, belonged to St. Peter's Church, was their uh, parish hall. That's Burke's implement shop on the right. There's the Credit River, uh, one of the old bridges. That's pictures 1912. I think this is probably a Sunday school picnic during the winter time. They would take the kids out for a sleigh ride and then go back to the uh, community hall or parish hall for maybe a sandwich or cookies or something like that. There's the community hall. This one was built in 1928 of stone. Um, it's still sound. And I've been on the hall board for about 40 years. Thank you very much for speaking, us, for speaking with us today, Mr. Allison. Um, we learned quite a bit about the history of Arendelle and his people. Well, I'm glad I was able to do what I've done, but uh, it could have been speeded up a whole lot. We thank you anyway. Sure. Just fall.